I do. <laughs> I am so angry. I, I tried having like a different thing for my go live notification, but it didn't let me put in coward. Coward is against Twitch's policy for titles. Really? Does he hate me that much? I'm going to cry. Oh, he's here. Yeah, I'm right here. Don't worry. I mean, you can still cry if you want to. Damn, wasn't here to panic. <laughs> okay, let me send out my tweets real fast. One second. like visiting Kyra's mom. I think we were. Or Kyra's mom? What? No. <laughs> to visit Cove's mom, Kyra. <laughs> oh, let me get rid of my cat and stuff too. I'm not playing Got Happy anymore. Okay. Damn, we're doing Kyra. <laughs> Kyra's mom, grandmommy. <laughs> I would be proud. Oh no, we already left Kyra's place. Okay. I thought we did, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Try, try would be like, oh, Kyra's got a grandma? Because mm. <laughs> of how he was with Sophie's grandma. <laughs> Alright, let me close out of the Phoenix Wright music. And let's play. Hopefully it doesn't crash again like last time i remember what it like crashed like three times last stream oh, i gotta wait for it to load here i'll keep playing the phoenix right music while it loads i forget that it does that now i guess the baxter release added like a bunch of stuff because i never i never had like a loading screen whenever i play this game I was praying for Twy because Elio was streaming in the morning that time. So they weren't there to see step three Kyra. <laughs> Baxter keeps causing problems. It's fine. He can he can cause all the problems. As long as he's just causing problems for me. And no one else. Yeah, I had to leave. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, Kyra is looking great. I really liked her, her step three design. I think I liked it more than her step two. Cause of how she had like curly hair and stuff. Look really pretty. Oh. <laughs> Game crashed again. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, Kyra's stepping on us three times is great. Wait, what? <laughs> I'll keep playing Phoenix right. Yeah. I feel like whenever I play this, I have to quickly press continue because I don't know why, but the main menu for our life hates me streaming it and it always crashes. But the moment I get into the game, it's fine. It's weird. Why stop at three? <laughs> That's weird, yeah, it's really weird. I don't know why it's, it's just the menu that does that. It's so weird. Get my blink room, very cold. Ugh. Vibe. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm gonna, oh. What's showing the game? Doesn't seem to be showing the game for you guys. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. I 
It crashed again. Why is it doing that? Oh no. Please, I just want to play our life. Derek, stop it. <laughs> Let Elio be with Cove. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Baxter. Derek did nothing wrong. Wait, I thought Derek was preventing me from being with Cove. Huh? Baxter is a problem. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Boom. Rope. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm seeing the title screen. Okay. I crashed again! Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. Crashing. Game is very slow and keeps crashing. Hold on. Crashing. Clearing the catch is sometimes needed. Game doesn't install crashes. Let me see. Problems with my graphics card? Let me see. Huh. I'll browse, let me see. Change my graphics card settings for this. Yeah, high performance. That was using like a different, <clears throat> a different graphics card, I think, instead of my Nvidia. So let's see if it works now. I'm so sorry, my my dearest Derek, my my Derek Derek. I accidentally called Baxter Derek. <laughs> Who remembers Baxter Stockman? I do not remember. I never watched uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles much. Crashing upon changing scenes on OBS. Be weird to be OBS, but yeah, no, it's it. The game itself crashes. What is this banger? Oh, this is a. Uh... Let me see. I think this is Madman. Gentle Madman from Persona Five. But it's reinterpreted, so it's like a cover by the Music Man. Hold on. Why is this crashing so much? Hold on. Let me close out of some stuff, maybe. I'll close out of Chameleon. See if that helps. Did you see the live action One Piece trailer? It's gonna be so bad. I did not. I found the exact cover. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a really good cover. Mm. 
You know a live action movie I'm excited for? Cocaine Shark. I saw that and hmm. I never I never got into One Piece, so I don't even care <laughs> about the movie. Can't wait to see Shiri Gomu Gomu. Is that like the long arm thing? is pretty often for me. Once I restart the game from my last save, I can't get past the part where it crashed. Okay. Let me see. More than one changing the settings might pause. The game is just running poorly on your computer, turning the animation off. Let me see. Maybe if I change it to this, that might work. Could be the timing, because you have Baxter DLC, but you didn't see the original Baxter events? Maybe. It's made by the Cowboy Bebop live action crew, so it's no, it's gonna be bad. Mm. I never saw the Cowboy Bebop live action. I just, I do not care about anime, <clears throat> about anime live actions. Like, I'm trying to remember all the live actions I've seen. I've seen, uh, I've seen Death Note. I saw like, I saw the Japanese live action for Death Note. Okay. Now it's not showing the game. Hold on. Showing the game. Okay, there you go. That works. Okay. Looks like that worked. That worked. I I changed it to not use a uh, Nvidia. I changed it to a different uh, graphics card because I have two. Uh, can you guys hear the game all right? Okay, so I think I found out the problem because it was using NVIDIA and I guess I, I got too much running on NVIDIA right now. Okay, uh, how does this sound? Does this sound all right? The only have different live actions are the shoujo slice of life ones. I liked the, uh, I liked the Japanese live action death notes. They were okay. I did not like the American death note one though. I, I actually remember I saw the Death Note movies in theaters. Live action Dragon Ball was so bad that Toriyama said, wow, that sucked. I don't want that to be the last Dragon Ball thing to ever release. And he started to work on Battle of the Gods. Oh my God. Okay, let's go back into the game. Uh, can you guys hear me and everything all right? When Coke parked the car, you pushed the door to get out, and the first thing you did was look up. Enormous redwood trees surrounded you on all sides, their massive trunks shooting straight up into a canopy of foliage overhead. Yeah, I have my left earphone, so I hear you all left. Okay, nice. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the US Death Note. No, no. I saw the- I have- I have the Japanese Death Note on DVD, even. 
I remember, I think I, I saw the first one on DVD, and then I saw the second one in theaters, and I think, didn't they also have a Beyond Birthday, uh, live action Death Note in Japan? But yeah, I thought, I thought the Japanese Death Note ones were pretty good. I hear you correctly. Okay, nice. But yeah, Netflix one sucks. They should have had Zac Efron play Light Yagami. There were too many of them to count, stretching on and on as far as you could see. You squinted against the sunlight that was peeking through the leaves and dancing on the paths around you. You know, the Death Note live action could be terrible, but if they had Zac Efron as Light Yagami, I would watch it. I would call it base just for that. Yagami should not have been that shitty. Yeah, he looked, he did not look like light. Looked so bad. Yeah, I just did not watch the, the Netflix one. I saw, I saw like the trailer for it and I was like, yeah, no, no way. It's great, right? He smiled at you from over the roof of the car before glancing around the place fondly. <laughs> Remember the trip our families took here that one summer? Wait, we came here before? I always wanted to go to the Redwood Tree. It was cool going on a journey and seeing the forest in person, even if we didn't stay very long. So... And I guess we can stay for even less this time, but oh well. That wood ain't red. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Yeah, I feel like that's almost always an issue of higher-ups taking a popular IP thinking that it'll already have a fan base so they won't have to try instead of actually making a good product looks in Dragon Ball. The Gantz live action was great though. I've never seen the Gantz live action. I did like Gantz. It just seemed like a good time to stop by. Who knows when we'll get another chance. Yeah, I liked I liked the manga for Gantz. I don't I don't know if I finished watching the anime for Gantz. I think I just went and became like manga only after a while of watching it. His voice got a little softer at the end. It seemed to be bittersweet for him, being in a place that he was so fond of, but not having the time to appreciate it fully. Yeah, I felt pretty good about being there. There was plenty to look at, and it was a good chance to refuel with some snacks and water before heading out again. For all I know, Edge of Tomorrow was so good that overshadowed the original manga. Some parts of the manga were taking very poorly, but it was entertaining. Mm. I put up with you for the cheese. <laughs> Yeah, there will be more chances in the future, I promise. Yeah, we're gonna come back here. Who smiled, shoving his hands in his pockets and dipping his head. I'm gonna hold you to that. Then hold me. Do it. Hold me. You won't. The two of you walked around for a while, completely dwarfed by the sheer scale of the redwoods. It kind of put your view of yourself and everything in a strange perspective. I would have been down with the Netflix version if they made their own spin on it to commentate on the US justice system, especially since Elle is played by a black actor, but it was as shallow as you'd expect. Yeah, that would have been nice if they did that, but god. You took in a lungful of clean forest air, listening to the sounds of birdsong, and the cool breeze rustling through the underbrush, taking advantage of the space to move around freely. However, you felt about being there. It was a totally different scene than sitting in that old car for hours and hours. The abuse on women and the black dude doing that on the streets? Oh? Yeah, I'll take- I'll take Cove's hand. Actually, I am not- I am not a, uh, hand holder, so it would be Cove that would nudge my hand. He didn't pull away, and he intertwined his fingers through yours, smiling at you as he relaxed into your touch. Being here again, you couldn't help but reminisce on what else had happened during the trip you had taken here all that time ago. There were a lot of things that had reminded you of it recently. No, you don't. Cole Holden is holding me, not you, you Baxter Sam. 
I have two hands. Cove can hold me in one and Baxter can hold me in the other. Okay. You looked over at Cove, who seemed to be lost in the peace of the place, and you wondered if any of it crossed his mind. Smiling at the sight, you thought back on what had been a highlight of that long gone vacation. Yeah. You can have more hands when you catch these hands. Cove is mine. <laughs> so is Kyra. That's awkward. You're dating his mom. That now now that is awkward. That is awkward. You're, you're, you're shaming me for Baxter, but you're going after Cove while also going after his mom? That's wrong. Remember how birds stole your dad's lunch? Yeah, I want to talk about the birds. Cove instantly started laughing at the memory of the bird taking off with Mr. Holden's sandwich. Parts of the Gons manga, you know, not gonna say what because spoilers, but the way the creator did some things were a bit tasteless. I think I might know of a certain scene you're talking about. And yeah. After all these years, it was still a once in a lifetime sight. Poor dad. He can never catch a break. Listen, she's either gonna be mommy or mommy in law. I'm fine either way. Well, will Cove be okay? With it, you get married to Cove, and then I'm like, yeah, so, like, he was chasing after your mom, too. Like, what if you just, like, he'll start thinking that you got with him just so you could see his mom. Yeah, pick one, you goody. I'll either be his daddy or his stepdaddy. <laughs> Don't say that. We continued chatting about the trip a little while longer. About the things he had seen and done and even eaten. <laughs> what do you mean his daddy or his stepdaddy? If you get with Cope, what does that make you? Are you saying you're gonna be his daddy when you date him? He'll be fine either way. Ty, what are you implying? A lot of the memories Cove had of the trip were similar to your own, but you were also surprised to hear a few other things from his point of view. So much had happened that there was no shortage of things to talk about. The place certainly had a nostalgic quality about it. Listen, the tea in Cove is for top. What does that mean? <laughs> your spirits were light as you ambled past information boards and picnic areas. But before long, you decided it was time to bring the short stop to an end and head back to the car to get on the road again. I'm just saying, Cove's mom has got it going on. Oh wait, don't, don't you use the kite smiley face with me. Oi, but there is no... Oi. <laughs> Twite. <laughs> You shame me, but here you are saying you're gonna be his daddy and, and shit like that. Okay. Cove sighed when you finally reached the vehicle, jangling the keys in his hand before unlocking the doors. Yeah, these simps, SMH. <laughs> well. I wish we didn't have to go, but we're gonna be responsible and not stay longer than we should. How grown up of you. He smiled slightly, and with that, the two of you jumped into the car, buckled in, and he put it in drive. You're getting closer and closer to town as the sun started setting, though we're still far away that the radio stations were unfamiliar to me. Yo, where's Radio Disney? Put the Radio Disney on, boy. Ooh, CG. Wait, is the game frozen? Huh? What? That was weird. There we go. Oh, okay. What the hell? So it's frozen for you guys? Okay, let me... Okay, you guys can see the text now. That's weird. I'll have to keep my eye on the stream manager then. 
It's working, yeah. Okay. Cook twisted the dial this way and that before stumbling onto a channel with a song you seem to like. That was a rare gift from the fates in a sea of static, strange radio jockeys and grating tunes. It's working, yeah. Okay. Mm, he's so cute. His face immediately brightened at the sound of it, and he drummed his fingers along the bottom of the steering wheel happily. Yeah, is this like... Let me see. Cold baby. Did the text change the moment I started reading his face immediately brightened, or did it just change when I tapped out just now? I'm curious. Because I'm trying to monitor it, but I'm not sure what stream delay is. It changed when you tabbed out, I guess. Okay, that's weird. Let me see. It jumped right to the car when you did so. Hmm. Gonna mess with something. Let's go with game capture. Our life. Now, yeah, why isn't it capturing it? Elio is not showing us the date with Cove. <laughs> Let me try this. Why is this being so difficult all of a sudden? Is that capturing the game? Exit the menu. Is it still on the menu for you guys? Is it still on the menu? showing the menu but when I tab out okay let me try it like this let me play it in window then that is so weird if chat's paying attention because I didn't see anything in, in the chat. So I guess I'll try to fix it all on my own. Um, let's see. Okay, it seems to be working fine now with me tapping in and out. Okay. Uh, can you guys... Everything look alright for you guys? Well... Mm. So 
hello? Hi. Yeah, can you see everything and hear everything all right? Is everything okay? Yep, eyes of cold blink too, okay. Then we'll, we'll continue then. Sitting back in his seat, he bopped his head along in time to the tune. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that now. But yeah, uh, I read along with the text, so if you guys like hear me reading something but you don't see it on screen, uh, let me know. <laughs> so this looks really nice, that expression. Yeah, I'll sing along. Cove raised a pleased eyebrow at your vocalization. Emboldened by you, Cove decided to do a little lip syncing. Every now and then, a part would be stumbled over, and by the end, you were both laughing too much to continue. We'll let you know, don't worry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the song ended, and Cove reached over to start cycling through the radio stations again. Upon finding nothing tolerable, he flipped the dial off in defeat and leaned back in his seat with a sigh. You rested your head on your hand and stared out the window as the sky darkened watching the landscape slowly melt into more familiar views. The miles went on, and any energy you had earlier was beginning to drain away. You imagined home and your family. You'd be there together soon. You know, I spent all these years living in Sunset Bird, and taking a few weeks each summer visiting my mom in that second room. It's not gonna happen anymore. Not really. Wait, why? I mean... I can still see my parents, but the way it all works between us has changed forever. Wait, eh? He paused, the silence stretching. A serious look settled on his face. His thoughts far away. I wish I could visit your mom, Cove. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way about my parents, too. I know they'll always be there for me, but we don't really have the same relationship we used to. Cove's mouth curled into a tight line, and he gave a small nod. He got the feeling that he understood how you felt. Don't say it like that, Cove. <laughs> Cove stared straight ahead, down the long, long road. The path looked like it never ends from where you were, but that wasn't true. Eventually, he found a few more words to say. I'm so glad. I think it's good we were able to go to this trip. Without any parents or chaperones, it was just us. We did it all. I don't know, I feel a little more independent now. A little more ready for what's ahead. Hmm, I'm not sure I'll ever be ready. <laughs> Thought of leaving home, my mom's, it's scary. Cove sighed solemnly. The topic seemed to wear on Cove, and he made an attempt to find something else to speak on. Yeah, honestly, big mood. Big mood, Cove. Same. Uh, so, I'm kind of sad about getting back. I'm gonna miss having you right there tonight. <laughs> His eyebrows dipped, and he laughed at himself in embarrassment. <laughs> That sounded way more forward than I meant it to. It's just nice when you're nearby. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> you let out a little chuckle yourself, and the atmosphere became more relaxed. The two of you fallen into a comfortable silence. Oh god. <laughs> the sky outside grew even darker as the hours passed by. The stars blinking on like tiny fireflies painted onto a canvas of blue. Scenery continued transitioning between open roads, industrial areas, and beach towns, becoming increasingly recognizable as time went on. You felt somewhat disconnected from the world around you as you watched it through your window, your tired mind growing hazy. 
It was a strange reflective feeling, but peaceful nonetheless. Soon enough, the world would happen, or uh, the world would return to you, and you'd find your feet firmly on the ground. It couldn't be helped. The adventure would end, life could continue, but your memories would linger on. God. Okay, so we got some DLC here. Oh god, reflection. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this one. I don't like the self-reflectory steps, because they get too real. After finishing breakfast at the Holden's house, you and Cove had retreated to his room to relax before starting the day in earnest. Or perhaps you would take it easy for the whole afternoon. Neither of you had plans exactly, so you are free to do whatever came to mind. Let's see... Sat on the ground doodling pictures in the sand scattered across the floor. You still got fucking sand in your room? <sighs> Are you fucking serious? Stop having sand. What did I tell you? God, sand on the floor is what an animal. He's had it since he was a teenager. It's been, what, five years? And he still has sand on his floor? Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna watch the... Where's the leave the room option? I'm getting out of here. Like, does he never vacuum? His room must be dusty as hell. <sighs> there were tiny ones starting away as soon as they came into view, and big ones drifting aimlessly along. You let your attention wander from one to another. Their movements lulling you into a tra trance. He vacuums, but he brings sand back. <laughs> Leave him alone. The boy just leaves sand on the floor, though. God. Even with your mind elsewhere, you could tell Cove was similarly at ease. He had his chin propped up on one hand as he scrolled through his phone. Yeah, when are you gonna vacuum? Get, get rid of the sand. Can we vacuum your room, Cove? A burst of laughter broke the silence, hooking your attention and bringing you back to the present. You looked at Cove for an explanation. His eyes, now crinkled with mirth, were still locked on the screen. Oh, are you on iFunny? What's so funny? He finally looked up at you, smirking. <laughs> Dad scanned some old photos, you know? He drew a rectangle in the air with the phone free hand. Printed ones out. Printed out ones, back from when I was little. He texted it all to me last night, I guess. I've been checking them out. Echnicy? Kof narrowed his eyes, the smile still bent. I was gonna show you. I just wanted to look at it first to make sure there was nothing super embarrassing. You never know my dad. God, that reminds me of my... <laughs> my mom's photo album. Okay, so... <sighs> I never said anything about this, but when I was a kid, I did not like wearing clothes. So like, half of my, my pictures of me until I'm like five years old, I'm just butt naked. Or like, I'll have like a necklace on or whatever. And my mom just has like, like my kids, like my, my friends would be like talking about like, like their albums and stuff. And they'd be like, oh, we want to see your album, Elio. And I'm like, no. <laughs> All my pictures are of me like laying on the ground butt naked with nothing but a necklace on. Because <laughs> I guess I was okay wearing a necklace because I had like, I had like a necklace with a sun on it. And you would, like, see that in my pictures, or, like, I had a necklace on. Okay, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. So, like, all, all of my pictures were that until I was, like, five years old. Or, like, any pictures that showed me in clothes, you could see I was uncomfortable. Or, like, I was taking them off in the photos. <laughs> like, my mom took this one photo of me. And, like, you know, I was a kid, so my mom dressed me up femininely. But, like, I had, like, pictures of me, like, lifting up my skirt. And, like, those are, like, all the pictures of me other than, like, me butt naked. 
because like I didn't want to wear the skirt so like whenever she would take a photo I would be like lifting it up trying to get it off <laughs> but it like frames it to make it look like I'm doing a curtsy but you just know the moment like that shot was taken I'm like throwing off the shirt and dress or whatever and then like other other degrees of photos I had were me with food all over my face. I remember having a lot of photos of me sitting in a table with food just all over my face and me screaming. Like my face is red and screaming with food all over my face. I remember I had like ice cream all over my face in one or like soup or whatever all over my face and me crying. Or like, I remember my mom took pictures of her brushing my hair and me screaming, me crying, because I didn't want my mom to touch my hair. Like, those are all of my childhood photos. Me butt naked, me taking off my clothes, or me screaming or crying. Those were all my childhood photos. Like, I think the only good childhood photos I ever had were like school photos, because at least when I was in school, I would not take off my clothes, which is a good thing. God, so many possible templates for what did Elio never do. <laughs> for some reason, women's clothing offends me. Not really, but I did feel bad for them. They will never know the sheer power that pockets have and the raw potential of cargo shorts. Yeah, women's pants are just like, why? You don't got no fucking, got no fucking pockets. He grimaced envisioning what horrors his dad might unwittingly spring on him. But naked cold. I mean... Laying in the sand. <laughs> I mean, what if there's a photo of me getting potty trained or something? Yeah, there, that was the picture I had of me getting potty trained and me lifting my skirt up. <laughs> he suppressed an empathetic shudder and nodded. Cove only cleared his throat nervously. The fear of his dad's well-meaning actions still looming large in his mind. My sister nearly beat me up for saying I didn't have room in my pocket to put something. Oh my god, really? Anyway, before we forget, I was laughing because I came across a Halloween one from when I was eight. The year I was a zombie, remember? Oh, I'm trying to remember my... All of... Oh my god. What the fuck? I, I remember my Halloween pictures when I was a baby. I remember I was Pocahontas one year, and looking back on that, Elio, no, don't. Don't be Pocahontas for Halloween, no. And then I was Jasmine from Aladdin for one year. And then, what other costumes? I was Pikachu, I was Pikachu one year. Why not? Because, because of the... Do, do you know, like, about Pocahontas and how, like, I, I, I personally, like, even if, even if I was a fan of the movie, which I'm not, uh, I would not want to buy any merch of Pocahontas in modern day because of just, I don't know how to explain it, um, but the, not really symbolicness, but, like, the disrespect, I guess is one way of putting it. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I remember I was Pikachu one year, full body suit Pikachu. But like, doesn't really make it inherently bad when you were like five, yeah. It's just looking back, I'm just like, no, Elio, no. <laughs> but I didn't know any better, I was five years old. I think one year I was Harry Potter. And then I was kite one year. I had my mom like kind of vaguely make a kite costume. He shook his head, grinning wryly while holding the phone out to you. There better be a photo of you as a zombie. He walked over and took a seat on the bed next to him to get the full view. Yeah! Let's go! I never even liked zombies. All I wanted was to show off my new scar. It needed to be something scary. It couldn't be a normal person who had a scar, according to my eight-year-old mind. <laughs> I was a little dork. You're a little dork nowadays too, Cole. Oh, that's so cute. Right? 
Dad really wanted to be useful, as usual. He came up with the idea of being an undead person. He was pretty good, huh? I was so jealous of that look. <laughs> uh, I was jealous of that look. I would be jealous of this look as a kid. I'd be like, damn, that's so raw. I wish that were me. You tried your best, but it was hard to compete with a real life scar. Or so you'd wistfully thought at the time. Cub chuckled at your reply. Can't believe how much larger my scar used to be. He looked down at his arm, a soft smile on his face. He traced what remained of the jagged line with his fingers, just as you'd seen him do countless times before. Yeah, it's so small now. His voice was playful when he spoke again. <sighs> Look how tiny it is now. How am I gonna pretend to be tough without a big scar? <laughs> Hope you never fooled anyone. <laughs> In a long-suffering way? What's that mean? Let's make a new one. No! Yeah, I I'm relieved that he accepts and like his scar. Because I, I remember he used to be like very self-conscious about his scar. Cook smiled bashfully, pleased with his joke, and ducked his head to look away from you. His fingers were still tracing the scarred patch of skin. I really do like having this. Even if it is kind of little these days. He's always so shy, like... He was letting you in on a big secret. Cliff turned back to face you fully, finally letting go of his scar. He was happy that Mark was a part of him and clearly held meaning for Cove. I think I would ask. Actually, no. I don't know. I don't know. Like, with touching scars, I would be, like, really awkward because I have a scar in my arm, too. It's kind of in the same area as Cove, actually, but mine's a lot smaller. It's like just like kind of a line. Uh, it's like a little dot at the end. But I don't know. If someone just started touching my scar, I'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna smile back at him. The scar had been there as long as you'd known Cove, though when you'd first met, it had been concealed by that neon pink cast. I have one on my forehead, I kind of don't want- Yeah, touching it. Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah, if someone just came up to me and started touching my scar, like, even if, like, it's not, like, a traumatizing thing for me, I'm just like, why are you touching my scar? So? When I hear how I managed to go jet skiing when I was eight, you're initially stunned that he'd guess what you were thinking. Though, given the topic of conversation and the direction of your gaze, it was a natural conclusion to reach. Not bothered by your reaction, Cook continued with a shrug. I don't mind telling you, it's nothing special. He rubbed the back of his neck, grinning sheepishly. I mean, scar or no scar, it would be odd if someone just touched my face. Yeah, same! Like, whether or not they're touching my scar, if someone just randomly, like, touches my arm, I'll be like, no. Like, I don't even like when my friends touch me. Like, my friends have to be like, hey, can I hug you? Because, like... I just... I react badly. Mostly it's just really dumb. You nodded. That was something you'd like to hear more about. Especially knowing that no lasting harm had come of it. Love stared into the distance. Lips parted as he readied the story in his mind. Oh! Random voice mod? Let me get that going for you. Give it a few minutes for the program to start it up. So me and my dad and mom were at a party. I don't know if it was a casual get together or a specific celebration. I hope it wasn't for something meaningful considering how I ended it. Oh. He winced then managed a bashful smile. Um. Anyway, my mom and dad were off doing stuff, talking to people, I guess. I was left with the other non-adults. Most of them were older than I was. Maybe all of them were? His brow furrowed as he tried to recall dusty memories. Then he shrugged again and continued. The older kids were taking turns on the jet skis. There weren't enough for everyone to ride at once, so in between turns, they were 
uh, hanging out on the shore. I was meant to just sit there with them and watch. Remember when you first met Cove, you bet he hadn't been satisfied with that arrangement. He confirmed that suspicion. Okay, here are the voice mods for today, Leonix. We got voice enhancer, magic chords, custom pitch, ogre, exo, or birthday. So those are the ones available today. Ogre, all right. Okay, it does nothing. Yeah, let's try... Try EXO. Oh, wait. Oh, I know what the problem is. I didn't click voice changer. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay. There we go. I didn't click voice changer. Okay. Yeah, it's just like, um... Uh, it plays back through the desktop audio instead of my mic auxiliary channel. So, <laughs> well, this one is great. <laughs> yeah, this is the ogre one. <laughs> I was pretty unhappy. It wasn't a party for me. Not when all I could do was look at other people all have fun when I couldn't. I'm an ogre. I got, got layers. The teens must have realized that, though I never heard I never hid when I was pouting as a kid. You sound like a giant. Ooh, I am very tall. Elio let be very tall. Seven feet. Only when you were a kid? Both bristled with embarrassment. You look pretty sulky. It looked pretty sulky to you. Come on, let me finish the story. <laughs> Elio big feet. <laughs> that it sounds wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's not how I don't know. Yeah. Big P. I got the big PP. -P. Sorry, bunny big. So big. Alright. Both side. Letting go of the interruption and picking up where you left off. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. And take a moment. I'm so big and buff. I'm big and buff. Big beefy boy. Well, basically, someone offered to let me ride. I was way too small to drive it myself, but this older kid, they must have been at least 16, said I could sit in front of them while they controlled the jet ski. I know I wasn't supposed to do anything like that. Still, I figured my parents were doing whatever they wanted, so why couldn't I? I nodded at the person and I remember the other teens helping me onto the jet ski, along with the one driving. We sped off into the water. We only missed the buff model. Don't worry, I'll, I'll make a buff model someday, hold on. I actually got some sketches, if you guys want to see. I might, I might change the design a little bit, I don't know. I'm still, like, stuck in whether I like it or not. Hold on. Let me show you. Guys. Okay. Go in my folder. So there's, like, three layers. I, I would have, like, three clothing towels if I got this done. Oh god, why am I heading out? Okay. Uh, this is with all of the clothing layers on. Oh, let me. Whoa. 
fit the screen. Yeah, so this is the design so far that I this figure. Yeah, so it's like the it's Bomong Elio. No! <laughs> And so it's got like a big fluffy coat that's like light gray with like little stars, star constellations that sparkle in it. And then the coat is like light blue with like white, white pockets. And then underneath is a vest that is like dark blue with like white stripes and then a uh, the corsage. Prime Boss Elio, yes! And got like shorts with belts and like a a, a fishnet fishnets. And I got like a nice uh this one is planned to have like a, a red hair streak in it. Like blood. And then there's the the earrings. And then there's a here's the next layer. Let me just save this. So that's the, the layer with all the clothes on. Big fluffy. And then this is the next one. This is without the coat on. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so you can see like more of the, the vest here. And then I got like gloves on. And you can see more of the, the shorts too. And then, that's like an alt hairstyle without the ponytail. And then, this one I, this is like a, I want like an alt, a uh, little toggle for the, the chest titty area. Let me show that. And then this is the final layer, this is with it all off. I wanted to have like long hair again, but I didn't want it to be like the current model, so I, I thought of it being like disheveled hair. Like I just woke up and it's just like beer chest. And you can see I got like combat boots on and then I want like an alt or instead of just like a beer chest, there's like a, a pentagram belt around the chest area. I don't know. I thought that would be cool. But yeah, that's that's the current plan. I might I might change things around a little bit. I don't know. I'm still I'm still deciding stuff. So. But yeah, after the model that is being rigged, that's the next outfit I want to do. I want to do like a mob boss, prime boss kind of design. I don't know if that carried it across with the design or not. I, I saw Linux say crime boss, so I like to believe it carries across the message. <laughs> anyway, let me get rid of the, the voice changer now. Okay. Let me turn up the game audio again. I just turned it down because the, the voice changer lowers down my voice. Okay. Yeah, can you guys hear everything all right now? Cliff smiled widely and wistfully. Mm-hmm, sounds fine. Okay, good. It was amazing, at first. My hair was flying everywhere as we zoomed away from the shore. I loved being out on the water like that. Too bad it turned out steering a jet ski with an eight-year-old sat on your lap was harder than a bunch of kids figured it would be. The team tried their best, but they couldn't keep control for long. We got spun around and went right into the sand. He sucked in a deep breath. The other person wasn't hurt, thankfully. They held onto the bars and stayed in their seat. I didn't. I was thrown at full speed into a, uh, into a rocky part of the shore near the dock. Uh. I must have tried to brace for impact or catch myself because my arm is what I mostly landed on. Uh. He looked down at the limb in question. You could see him visualizing the long-heeled injury. Oh, no. Ooh, 
that sounds so painful. That's... It was pretty torn up. After that, it's hazy for me. I got taken to the hospital. I didn't feel a lot of pain when it first happened. Oh, oh my god! Thank you for following, Just Julia! I hope you enjoy it here. Thank you! Welcome, welcome! All I remember thinking about was how I was covered in sand and the greens were uncomfortable. The sand was uncomfortable, but you love sand. Hope chuckled. I know, right? I did start feeling my arm later. It definitely hurt eventually. Doctor said my arm was broken, along with being torn open. Ooh! That's how I ended up getting my pink cast. He smiled nostalgically. Well, I'm glad he's able to use his arm now. By color, it seemed just nice and happy at the time. It brightened the mood, so I picked it. The smile faded. He finished the story with a sigh, his eyes downcast. I feel bad I did any of that. I hope whoever that teen was, they weren't traumatized by seeing a little kid go flying into the ground. They were just trying to do a nice thing. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> That would traumatize me. <laughs> Cove threw arms out to the side, dramatically. <sighs> I wish I knew who they were so I could give them a call and say I'm still in one piece. But yeah, that's the full story. Oh, I'm glad you were both okay in the long run. I, I feel like yelling at him over something he did when he was eight. I, I saw the how could you be so reckless option and that's like... Like, come on, he was eight years old. I think he learned. <laughs> That's the important thing. Cove sighed again. The regret ridden pain plainly on his face. Cove is in one piece? Is he the one piece because he's a treasure? <laughs> Smooth. It was a failure. That's just the truth. He smiled flatly. I... But to my credit, I think I've grown a lot since then. I... Wait. Yeah, it's not like he bit Kyra. I would understand though. Sorry, what? Twy? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> you really bringing back the I bit my mom story to say that... You wanna bite Kyra? <laughs> Cove's eyes went completely wide, suddenly reinvigorated. He seized his phone and tapped away at the screen. Yes, yes I am, she's a snack. Kyra will hate your guts if you bite her. <laughs> My god, Twy. You're being a little feral today. <laughs> What's up? I knew it. You weren't sure that he'd heard you, but he set his phone down and turned to face directly to you. His face was resolute, though the glow of the screen was no longer reflected in his eyes. They seemed to sparkle even brighter than before. Funny. We're adults. We can decide things for ourselves now. Yeah, you can go find the teenager and tell the, them that you're alive, I guess. I don't know, I feel like that would be awkward. Be like, hey, yeah, you remember the kid that, like, <laughs> flew into the rocks when you were, like, a teen? <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm alive. <laughs> Uh, I'll just wait. <laughs> the age requirement to rent a jet ski in California is 18. We could totally do it. You want to do that again? Uh, I don't know. I probably wouldn't want to go jet skiing. I'm kind of boring. Hey, remember that kid who was injured? This is him now. Feel old yet? <laughs> I think I'm gonna say that. A color flooded Cove's face. He mumbled a reply. <sighs> this is still the adult thing I want to do right now. He laughed. He was set to reap the privileges of adulthood, but his behavior right now reminded you more of a little kid. The disconnect between the two tickled you. Within a moment, Cove had recovered and returned to his serious expression from before. I'll be careful, and I really want you to be there when I try again, please? His voice was soft and earnest. You could tell how much the request meant to him. 
He also knew him enough to know that he wasn't gonna give up on this idea. Why didn't him go on his own wasn't an option. I can't have you running off by yourself. I'll go. Without an any hospital trips. Mm, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I'd probably give it a try. Like, if I went with Yume or, or Song, I would probably give it a try, but I would be scared. I'm scared of doing stuff like that. I could have swore I did go jet skiing as a kid. I think, well, no. Jet skiing, is jet skiing on, like, a boat? And, like, you're, you, like, have, like, a little line outcast, and you, like, ride on these little, like, these little skis, yeah, yeah, that's jet skiing. So I think I did go jet skiing as a kid and I hated it. <laughs> Puff perked up at once. A grin stretched wide across his face. It's practically bouncing in place. Yep, I don't wanna like give my friends a downer and be like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna go, so I'd probably go on it. <laughs> Let's go! You got up and worked as a team to gather everything needed for the trip. Those other aquatic hobbies came in handy, and he was quickly kitted out with everything he'd need other than the jet skis themselves. Jet skis gotta be expensive. He needed to run back home briefly, having dressed and prepared for a day that didn't involve jet skiing. But soon enough you were both ready and jumping into Cove's car. As you got in, you learned that Cove had used the brief time apart to locate a rental store on his phone. We're going today? You caught his eye as you clicked your seat belts into place. Excited, you held out a hand. Cove slapped it in a high five before setting off. You and Cove soon arrived. The ocean was perfectly inviting today. The deep blue of the water glittered under the clear sky, while the tide rolled in and out at its leisure. I'm so excited for this. I'm not. <laughs> uh... I would be scared. I would be scared! Spotting your uncertainty, Cove gave you a reassuring smile. Hey! Oh, hey. Wanna say hi to my dad while we're here? I've already texted my mom about the plan. He's working right now. You remembered how close the shop was. It wouldn't take long, even by walking. Sure, we can do that. Mr. Holden was a great guy, so you were happy to check in on him. Hey Bunny, wanna do this thing that injured me as a kid? Yes. If someone said that to me, I would be like, No, I don't. What? Sorry. Thanks. Sorry, it might be kinda awkward when he hears why we're here, but it should be alright. I mean, my parents forgave me a long time ago for that amazing stunt. <laughs> You're making your parents worry about you. Cove, I'm sorry, but I just know your parents are gonna be sitting beside themselves with worry if you tell them what we're doing. Cove, honey, I love you, but yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is not a good look, Cove. I don't want to be scared off jet skiing for my whole life because of it. This time, the one he seemed to be attempting to reassure was himself. Mm. It was only a short walk back down the dock to Mr. Holden's scuba shop. Cove breezed in, as familiar with the store as he was with his own home. Okay, I'm sure he's less clumsy than as an eight-year-old. Yeah. But God. <laughs> if one of my friends told me they got in an accident as a kid doing something, and they're like, yeah, let's do it, I would be like, I don't really want to do that. Let's see, the place is quiet, empty aside from a couple of customers, quietly browsing, and Cove's dad behind the counter. Alright, well, not to dredge anything up or interrupt, but the circumstances of my previous issue were less egregious than expected, so I guess I don't need to be as upset as I was. Oh, that's good! I'm glad, I'm glad things, things seem to have worked out a little bit. Yeah, at least it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I'm glad. Mr. Holden looked up, his friendly expression spreading into a grin, and he saw who had just entered. Hey! Hey, Bunny! Hey, Sport! What brings you all the way out here? Cast an eye at the way the two of you were dressed. 
did in my how you decked out. I'm guessing scuba diving? There's plenty here for that. What can I help you with? Huff chuckled, amused by how quickly his dad seized on a favorite topic. Or maybe it was how his dad always fell over himself trying to be useful. Yeah, can we go scuba diving instead, Cove? Hi, Dad. Um, we're not doing that this time. We sort of decided to go rent a couple of jet skis. The phrase jet skis had set Mr. Holden's mouth in a taut line immediately. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Jet skis. He echoed the words as his eyes instinctively darted to the scar on Cove's arm. That's... that's how... that's when... Oh, I knew this wasn't a good idea. Mr. Holden started to speak several times, each attempt quickly abandoned. Philip smiled encouragingly, trying not to add to his father's worries. Don't worry about it. I promise I'll be careful, and Bunny will be there too. We always look out for each other. Daddy Holden. <laughs> Mr. Holden pinched his face back into an unconvincing smile. I knew we shouldn't have told him. He's just gonna worry now. Right. Alright, you're a whole lot bigger now than you were back then. Heck, you can drive a car and everything. I'm sure you and Bunny will have plenty of fun. The worry still echoed out in his voice, barely concealed by the positive words, but Cove is buoyed by his father's support. For the record, I mean Cliff, not Cove. <laughs> okay, objection. He should definitely tell him. True. Uh, I would just rather not do this. Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, we're all set. We only stopped by to say hi and let you know since we were over here. Mr. Holden beamed, obviously moved by his son's simple consideration. Like, I told you guys about my, my go-kart accident, right? I have no interest to go go-karting now. Mr. Holden beamed, obviously moved by his son's simple consideration. Oh, you're so thoughtful. Thanks for taking the time. Dad, you don't need to thank me for that. But if he does it, then he should make sure his dad is okay with it. True. Mr. Holden simply laughed at his son's response. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> thank you for subscribing for 12 months, Overtaker! A good year! Oh my god, thank you! Jesus, a year! <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for sticking with me for an entire year, Overtaker. Thank you, thank you. Can always see if they can start off slow to see Cove's threshold. True. It'd be great if you could keep me in the loop while you're out there too. Just text me to let me know if it's going well or, or anything. I will. Sad smiled more easily. Imagine being here for a year. Could be me. <laughs> well, thank you. Anyway, back in a bit. Alright, see you in a bit, Twy. Great. Cove wrapped his arm, causing Mr. Holden's eyes to momentarily twitch back to the childhood injury. <laughs> yeah, can we not do this? Bye. We're gonna head out. See you later. Take care. See you, Mr. Holden. Mr. Holden waved you off as you, as you left the shore, as, as, as you left the store. The pair of you headed back to the docks, walking side by side. After your feet hit the boards, Cove's pace fell. Glancing over, you saw him looking down, out over the water. That wouldn't have been use, unusual if his expression hadn't been so somber. Oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> Have I had this twitch for that long? Oh my god, six years? No, no, that long, huh? Well, I, I didn't stream the whole time. I, I did use this account mostly to watch Benutes. I think like, I think like half of that was just watching other people stream. But still, oh my god. 
He wasn't geared up with anticipation or even nervousness, but with an uncharacteristic lethargy, something was weighing heavy on his mind. 11 months, 25 days, 21 hours. Dang. <laughs> you've been subscribed for longer than you've been following. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I know Elio took a year-long hiatus or two, so I personally feel like it's been four years technically. Yeah. Yeah, it feels more like four years. God. Gonna walk off into sea if you don't pay attention. Huh? He blinked, startled by you interrupting his rumination. Sorry. Are you sure you want to do this, Cove? He sighed. Though you tore his attention from the ocean, it gradually drifted back to the water. You cleared your throat, unwilling to lose him again. Sorry, again. He put his hand to his face, rubbing his eyes wearily. There I go, thinking everything's resolved with what's happened, and we can have fun. But I can't just enjoy anything. I had to find something else to get stuck in my head. Having second thoughts about jet skiing? No. No, that's not it. The ends of his lips were drawn into the beginning of a frown, like great clouds clustering to signal a coming storm. I figured my dad would be a little worried about me doing it, but what he was saying, it wasn't what I'd expected. He was so sad. He was more than nervous. Yeah. I think he feels bad, and now I feel bad, but it isn't as if I'm the only one. Whoever does something stupid or gets hurt. It got me thinking about that whole time. That's when I realized it wasn't long after that accident that my parents separated. I had a f okay. I had a feeling that that accident might have been like part of the reason they split up. Because like they didn't keep proper track of Cove and let him get hurt and they felt bad about that. And maybe they fought about that. And like blaming each other for not watching Cove. Uh, I would stay quiet. As a kid, I didn't think about the consequences of my actions, you know? Or how what I did impacted other people. Like, why should anyone care? I'm the one doing it, not them. It made no sense, and I still cared when other people did things I didn't like, but I was eight, and mostly just mad that nothing felt like it was in my control. Tell he was building up to something, so you nodded for him to continue. I was pretty difficult to deal with because of that attitude, but looking back, I think that's what saved me from something a lot of kids go through. Blaming themselves for their parents' divorce. Mm -hmm. Cool. Average person followed Elio for six years. Factoid actually sick. Just statistical error. Average person followed Elio for two to four years. Sloth Mama, who lives in cave and has friendship privileges, is an outlier and should not have been counted. <laughs> Jackie has been here day one. Jackie will always be the day one for me. It never crossed my mind that anything I did made a difference on my mom and dad's relationship. They would do what they did no matter what. Now though, I guess it's kind of hard to ignore that thought, huh? I mean... Their situation was already so hard, and I wasn't a good kid, so... No, you were a great kid, Cole. No, don't you say that. He left his words adrift as he looked down. The conclusion unfinished. There was silent between you. But only for a second. Hope pulled himself up to his full height, his chin held aloft. Whatever he decided, he was resolute. I'm going back. I've got to talk to my dad. I'm not going to let things be like before, where I just feel crappy and refuse to even tell him what's going on. That doesn't work for either of us. I... You can go ahead, if you want. Uh, I won't mind. I still really want to do this, and I'm sure it'll be okay. No. Yeah, there's no way you're going off on your own. We always look out for each other, remember? Oh, hey, Bungo. Bungo. Hi, Naruto. 
How's it going? Why am I bungo, bro? <laughs> I would smile gently, having wanted that deep down. Uh, yeah. Cove, you were a good kid with reasonable thoughts and wishes, please. Yeah, you were a great kid, Cove. Don't you ever think otherwise. Thanks. Let's go. You and Cove retook your steps down the docks once more, heading back to Mr. Holden's scuba shop. Customers you'd spotted in there before were now leaving the store. New bags clutched in their hands. You hoped this would mean Cove could have his conversation without a public audience. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> this time, Cove strode into the shop with purpose. Mr. Holden, still at the counter, glanced up to greet whoever had come inside. He grinned as you approached. How's it going? Hello again. Forget something? Sort of. Cove had reached the counter now. You needed to rush just to keep up with him as he crossed the show floor. Mr. Holden raised an eyebrow, taking in Cove's shift in attitude, and chose his next words with care. Is everything alright? Cove swallowed, not answering initially. Talking openly with his dad was still somewhat new for the son. You knew that he was struggling for the right way to begin. I wanted to ask about what happened. Oh, Mr. Holden winced as if the words had struck him physically. Oh, the accident? No, the divorce. Oh, the pained expression fell from Mr. Holden's face. Wide eyed, his jaw slack. He gaped at Cove. Huh? Well, why? Cove glanced over his shoulder at you. As your eyes met, he saw him draw confidence by having you by his side. He turned back to his father. I want to know the truth. His tone was grieve. Did me getting into the accident hurt your marriage? If I hadn't done it, would you and mom have gotten along better? No, hell no. Ooh. Mr. Holden quashed the suggestions with a gravity you'd rarely heard in his voice. Yeah, I don't think... I think, like... Definitely, maybe, like, the accent brought up some feelings with them, but I think it was more them as, like, people. I think they blamed each other for stuff, is the feeling I'm getting from them. You are eight years old. You're not responsible in any way. How and I should have protected you. <sighs> I can understand why you're feeling that. What happened was so horrible. How could it not have an impact? It did. Yeah, if not the accident, then something else would have happened. Yeah, it... It feels like they weren't... I don't know. Like, they definitely don't feel like they're in love right now. And I think maybe they, like, rushed into things, maybe? And maybe didn't, like, really love each other as much as they thought they did. I don't know. Me when I fucking get you. What is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oi. <laughs> Oi. It was a collection of us as parents. The relationship between just your mom and me was separate and already unsalvageable. Cove turned away, his brow still furrowed as he looked at the floor. I... well... Maybe I'm being anxious and it's taking over, but it wasn't just them. I always cause problems- No, you did it! Shut the hell up! He plowed on, unwilling to give up without explaining his worries. Our life, what suits and always. <laughs> hey, Bard! What if I'd been easier to raise? Or if you'd had me later on? Maybe even if you didn't have me at all, it would have been better for the two of you- No, don't you fucking say that! If I didn't have you, then what good would my life be? Mr. Holden didn't let the words hang unchallenged in the air for even a second. He hurried over to Cove, taking his son's arms in his hands. Cove, listen. There's only one person to blame for things not working, and that's me. 
Cove opened his mouth to speak, but Mr. Holden forced on, determined to erase any question in Cove's mind. I'm not saying this to dishonestly push accountability off from someone else or to throw a pity party for myself. You want to know the truth, so that's what I'm giving you. Your father is the reason our family couldn't stay together. You think you caused trouble? You should have seen me at your age. You're such a good kid. I can hardly believe how good you are. Mm. Mr. Holden's eyes were misty as he squeezed his son's arms. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, you need to blame yourself for. I'm sorry, Cove. To you and to Kyra. The kind of kid wouldn't have mattered, Cove. And you are the only kid that is in your parents' lives and care for. Yeah. Mom? Yeah, your mom. His pained face eased slightly into a bittersweet smile. Mr. Holden did nothing wrong. He's just a man whose wife took the cove. I mean, IDK what the backstory is, but parents are parents and that's how it'd be. Yeah, cove's asking about why they divorced, so... Uh, he thought that they broke up because of his accident when he was a kid. Hmm. Kyra, she was just so smart and driven and completely bursting with life. It's as if she could do anything. No, there wasn't a single solitary person who didn't want even a piece of her attention. Just to catch your eye for a moment. <laughs> for some crazy reason, she had a soft spot for my 17-year-old screw-up self. That's when we first met, though it definitely took some time before I managed to ask her out on a date. Mr. Holden shook his head, his smile melting as his recollection became solemn once more. And then we'd only been officially together for about six months, and we found out we were having a baby. I was so worried, so scared. She was so bright. Okay, yeah, that was kind of a feeling I had. I thought maybe they, uh, they jumped the gun on having children, and they weren't ready for it. And I think that was probably one of the big contributing factors to them splitting up. She was my rock, but we both knew the road ahead was going to be rockier. When we got married, I didn't see it as a dream come true. I wasn't about to start living my life in the only way I could imagine doing so. I thought what happened happened, and throwing my cards in with a girl like her was worth the risk. He grimaced, the sentence sour in his mouth, regretting his past perspective. Basically all my high school classmates, ugh. Then taking care of myself on my own and getting by, then all of a sudden I was gonna have a wife and a child. That's... So I thought, alright, I better step things up and take care of all of us, and that's what I did, sort of. Uh, so they just like my older brother and sister-in-law, for real, for real, oh god. He rolled his eyes. Some parents be like that. And if they're lucky, they split amicably, for the most part, and stay on good terms for the kids. Which seems to be how it is with them and Cove. Like, they still meet up and stuff, even though they're separated, which is nice. I made money, kept a roof over our heads, and put food on the table. But I was always busy, focused on taking care of things that I didn't stop to consider what anyone else was thinking or what they actually needed. Uh, I made every decision about what I did, and as a result, what happened to the family, by myself. Never asking what your mom felt, or even wondering if she might have an opinion. I'd tell Kyra about the great place I'd found and how we'd be moving there in the same breath. Yeah, that's not good. I thought I'd spent all of our savings and taken out a loan to start this business we're standing in. Even more nonsense. Anything I felt I needed to do, I did. Kyra couldn't even ask where I'd been all day without me rolling my eyes like she was being a nag. It's making sure we didn't starve, obviously, right? Wouldn't she trust me? Oh yeah, that... Oh, hold... <laughs> Cove. Or not Cove, Cliff. Cliff, dude. Let me see. I swear, every time I hear them, it's the same story. They had children, they are in debt. <laughs> he sighed, his head hung low. 
It's okay. My brother and sister-in-law have been together for this long, so they're probably the rare exception where they made it work. That's good. I'm glad- I'm glad they made it work. God. Spent the school part-time while raising you. Really knuckling down, but that didn't matter to me back then. People who stay together for the kids are more harmful than parents who admit they need to split. But are still a good team for the kids. I'd rather have parents happy in two separate houses than unhappy in the same house. I agree. Like, a lot of people ask me, like, when I was growing up, like, if I'm sad having just, like, a single mom. Because, like, my mom and my dad, like, broke up before I was even born. And I'm like, no. I'm fine with it. I never, I never cared. Like, as long as, like, you're, you know. She could have spent her days lying in bed, not dying, and I would have felt the same. I, I didn't care. I was gonna get it all done on my own either way. I get him. If a dude is working hard to keep a roof over his family's head and does little else with his time, it's a little strange to ask where he's been all day. But most likely was out of care than nagging. Yeah. I think she just wanted to spend time with him, is what it sounds like. It's so stupid. I admired her more than anyone when there was nothing at stake. Yet, as soon as responsibilities were involved, I couldn't let myself rely on her. He combed a hand through his hair, searching for an understanding of his own younger self. I'm not even sure why. Maybe I had something to prove. Maybe I'm the one who didn't trust her in the end. Poor Kyra. She had to spend every day mentally weighing the pros and cons of putting up with my horrible ideas for the sake of peace, or trying to explain to my blockheaded self what I was doing wrong. It must have been so stressful and frustrating, constantly having to let everything go because I was stubborn and absolutely would make a fight out of it. He snorted bitterly. I had the situation where I got angry at a friend for constantly checking up on me, because it felt like he was treating me like I couldn't take care of myself at the age of 26, but it was stupid to get mad at that. He was just making sure I was good, yeah. It, it comes from like a, a place of like care. But I could get why people get annoyed at stuff like that. Be like, what, you think I can't take care of myself on my own? <laughs> but people just care when they say stuff like that. Or like they just want to talk to you. And it's definitely stuck in my head a lot those days. Our relationship at that point was made of arguments and cool tolerance, but we still generally didn't see the divorce coming. We'd made it through the first few years, and after that, I never really considered it ending. It was just how life was. Damn, societal expectations and the pressure of having to be seen as self-reliant, yeah. In retrospect, it's clear Kyra kept thinking on it more every year, especially because she managed to finish her journalism degree, and with us being more stable, financially that is. She thought of everything, she even timed it right when your school ended for the year, so the process would hopefully be all settled before you had to worry about class again, aww. And we're already talking about it before the accident ever happened. I know I took it really hard, being a sad sack all around the neighborhood, but even that's unfair of me. When it shook out, I'm the one who got everything. Kyra didn't want to leave you, Cove. She never would have. I'm certain she felt like she had no choice but to end the relationship. I totally get mad when someone keeps telling me info that I already know. I know they just want to make sure I can do something, but when the NPC meme was a trend, that combo fucked me up mentally. Mmm. The business was doing really well by then, so I had an easier time making a living. She was between jobs, and when she did get a new job, it meant that she'd be traveling all the time. Oh, I don't care about the societal expectation at all. It was just a personal thing, because I was self-conscious about it for years for reasons. Oh, I think, I think Jackie is talking about, uh, about co co uh, no, co about Cliff. But, like, it feels like Cliff got into all that because of, like, societal expectation. Or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, that's valid, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
that's why she willingly accepted me having full custody. I know when I was a kid, I was annoyed by people like constantly talking to me, asking me how I am. I still think that I do get a little annoyed if that's like the one thing someone says to me. Um. She didn't get to be there with her child for so many moments. And you had to spend half of your life going up without your mother, and it's my fault. Yeah, I was mostly talking about Cliff. Mm -hmm. I generally thought I was in the Matrix and wanted to go outside and feel rain on my skin. Aww. Mr. Holden closed his eyes briefly as he took a breath. Yeah, sorry if you were talking about Cliff then. Yeah, damn, that expectation. <laughs> No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. You're all good, bro. Yeah, it's nice to have different perspectives on these things. Yeah, second opinions are always good. That's it. The story of Cliff and Kyra's marriage. Not exactly a fairy tale, but I want to be clear. I saw his grip on Cliff's arms tighten. No matter what happened with me and her, I'd never, ever want to miss out on being your dad. Close throat bobbed as he swallowed. His eyes glistened, glossy with tears that had yet to fall. He blinked quickly, trying to hold them back. Thank you for telling me. His voice was hoarse, little more than a whisper. Mr. Holden brought a hand up to his face and lightly nudged Cove's chin. You're welcome. You're a grown-up now, right? You deserve the truth. It's the least I could do for you. Cove managed a fragile smile. I was also thinking about my older brother since my mom would heckle him about needing to move out of the house and get a better job and to focus on school, but also take care of the baby and my guy was like fresh out of high school. Yeah, a lot of people like have expectations of you, but they don't process that you're a living human being. Like, like going to school, getting a job. Stuff like that. Like, they'll help you if, like, you're having issues with stuff. And it's like, bro, I'm sorry I'm having issues with stuff. I'm sorry I'm a human being. Like, everyone's trying their best, I think. Everyone's trying their best in their own way. So it sucks when people are like that to you. When you're, you're trying. Maybe it's not up to their standards, but you're trying. Thank you for taking care of me. For all of it. Can't confirm, but I mainly did night shift where retail switched from dealing with entitled customers to playing FNAF with the drug addicts while trying to finish my tasks at night. Oh god. <laughs> Mr. Holden brushed the compliment off with a wave of his hand. His voice is hoarse. I thought he was a human, not a horse. <laughs> Welcome back, Twy. No worries. There's nothing. Look at where we ended up. Got this whole entire store, a house, friends here, a very thoughtful son. It's all good for me. I'm so glad. His voice is still quiet, and he ducked his head shyly after saying the words. Mr. Holden patted him on the back. He could see the tears in Cove's eyes still shining, threatening to spill over. Oh, Yeah, that will fuck up a freshly made adult, yeah. Ooh. Mr. Holden put an arm around his shoulder, gently steering him towards the door. You should go have fun. Make some nice memories. Cove's gaze flickered over to you, the watery smile on his face solidified. Alright. Good. Now out you go. Mr. Holden nudged the two of you out of the shop. You both walked silently as you made your return to the docks. Cove's face was pensive. Haley's still digesting everything his dad said. Yeah, are you sure you want to do this, Cole? I completely understand if you want to do something different. He finally sighed, catching your attention. He hesitantly reached for the bag he had brought and raised it up. Would love to know how my older brother handles stress, though. He is usually a chill dude. Oh, God. Yeah. Bunny. I want to call my mom. I'm not gonna leave her out of things, and I want to know what she thinks about what happened and all of that. He fiddled with the straps of his bag, but still remained closed shut. It's not like I don't trust Dad, it's just Mom's thoughts are important too. Yeah, no, no, bro. Like, you want to know the whole story, that's important. I get it, Cove. There's two sides to every story, after all. He 
seemed relieved that you understood. You know he didn't want to be a bother with another delay. No, don't, don't, don't worry about it! I, I'm like, uh, uh, what, what's the word? I'm, I, I'm not sure if I wanted to do the, the, what is it called? The skiing, the water skiing thing anyway. Thanks. And I guess there's no time like the present. Time to ask. With that mini pep talk, he finally opened his bag and found his phone. Hope unlocked it quickly and tapped over to his favorite contacts. He called up his mom and put the phone on speaker as it dialed. Kyra must have had her phone close because she answered almost immediately. Cool. This is a pleasant surprise. I thought you'd be getting back to me later. Hey mom. I couldn't tell you. Chill people do things differently. The most chillest of people put up with so much. Yeah, they're simply built different. Hi, mommy. <laughs> there we go. Twy finally gets to see Kyra. Hi, hey, mommy. Oi. <laughs> he paused for a second and then looked at you. You're on speakerphone with Bunny, too. Hi, Kyra. Oh, hello, hello. I'm popular today. Well, what's going on? Don't keep me in suspense. Are you a pro jet skier already? Oh, did she already know? So, his dad already told her. Looking milfier than usual, I see. <laughs> Both chuckled and scratched the back of his head. Where are my channel points to ask Kyra to squish me? You're always fun. Oh wait, oh yeah, that's right, that's right. He told her before he told his dad. Um, we haven't started yet. Actually, there's something I kind of want to ask you about. Really? I'm intrigued. The voice was bright and excited. Hope moved the phone closer to his face so he could speak softly, aware that the tone of this conversation was about to change. Uh, I was talking to Dad earlier. It was about your relationship, and why you both divorced. Ah... Uh, that one syllable had lost all her earlier energy. Cove tightened his grip on his phone. It does make sense that the past would come up today. Yeah, but... He tried to brighten up the mood again. They weren't used to him being the perky one of the two. I can only imagine it felt like a stranger role reversal for him. <laughs> Dad said you were really amazing. He admired you a lot. <laughs> what a flatterer. She sighed wistfully, and you could hear some interference. Maybe she had shaken her head. You couldn't tell for sure. I mean, I can confirm that I am stressed about something at almost every minute of the day. I just simply don't acknowledge it. Big mood! <sighs> oh, Cliff. He bungled himself through regular, everyday adulting and social situations in astoundingly charming ways. I admire her, too. <laughs> That's very relatable, Barn. Yeah, I feel like everyone is just like stressed as fuck and just like doesn't show it. We all have our own ways of dealing with stress. Hi, how are you? Thinking of everything going wrong? I'm good. What about you? <laughs> Yet somehow, at the same exact time, he was an ambitious, slightly shady, under the table kind of man when it came to making his living in the world. So essentially, your father was an absolute heartthrob for someone such as myself. That's just how life is these days, unfortunately. Love and Kyra laughed delicately. The tension was broken into something lighter, more familiar between the two. It's cool how you both have nice things to say about each other. Ah! Uh! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! <laughs> Chat, in light of all of us admitting we are barely functional human beings, may I offer you an egg in these trying times? That would be excellent, Barnty. <laughs> Do I hear being jealous of, of Cliff? I agree, baby. She took a moment before continuing carefully. I'll take a crack at it. <laughs> all the egg puns. Do you have questions about what happened? I'm not sure. Both squinted at the phone in his hand as he tried to think. His 
Rican brushing through his hair. I'm not the functional and I agree with that statement. That is true. I am not functional as fuck. Was it unexpected, Elio? Very. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to know how you describe what it was like. Can I tell you what Dad said about it? All right. Hmm, I don't think Cliff would mind. Whatever he told you is probably what he'd say to me. All right, go for it. It was simply a yolk bun bun. Anyway, I'm just here chicken Kyra out. <laughs> Bruh. After taking a breath, Cove recapped Cliff's experience, doing his best to follow his dad's story. He went into a surprising amount of detail, and not a single thing was missed. Kyra listened on in absolute silence, letting her son speak without interruption. When Cove finished, he took another deep inhale of air. No need to get scrambled up about it. Um, let her do whatever she wants. <laughs> but how you guys come up with all the egg puns, dear lord? So, uh, what do you think? Kara sighed softly. I heard a clacking noise like she was drumming her nails on the back of her phone or on a countertop. That definitely sounds like Clifford. I also took a deep in inhale of air because Kyra took my breath away. <laughs> it's not exactly wrong, but it doesn't have a total picture. He put the emphasis on the wrong places, I think. Huh? What do you mean? We scramble our brains thinking of new ones. <laughs> For starters, Cliff unsurprisingly downplayed himself more than he had to. It's just too over easy to do it, Elio. <laughs> he did? The emphasis should be on Kyra. Cliff's eyebrows raised and his face continued to inch even closer to the screen. I just like to follow by example. <laughs> well. Well, since your dad was so praising of me, it's only fair to return the favor. Wait, Cliff is too self-deprecative? I have a chance! Yeah, when things don't work out between a couple, it usually isn't just one person. It's always a little bit of a story there. When Cliff said he was already taking care of himself when he met me, he means he was on his own. Should take a crack at it, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> the son's parents weren't, and still aren't, friendly people. They've always had a competitive relationship, though him getting into drinking and gambling as a teenager certainly didn't help. Oh. He knew they'd kick him out at 18, so he saved them the trouble and left home at 17. He always found a way to make it work, even without support. I met him a few months after that, and we hit it off right away. He was exactly what I wanted back then. Cliff was simply too hard-boiled to notice how she felt. <laughs> we dated, and then about half a year later, bam, you were on the way, Cove. Perhaps you can say that Elio should come out of his shell. <laughs> She laughed fondly as Cove clung to every word. Sorry chat, I left the nest of egg puns because I was simping for Kyra. It's all good. Understandable, honestly. I was really optimistic about it all. I couldn't wait to be a mother. And I was more than happy that Cliff was the father who'd be along for the ride. We got married quick, before you were born. Cliff's recollection of our wedded dynamic is pretty spot on. That is Pride Month, you know what that means, gay egg puns. <laughs> uh. It's extremely stubborn and just... Ah! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! <laughs> this whole segment is, is getting twi because of how jealous he is of Cliff, huh? <laughs> He's extremely stubborn and just, well, immature. Really highly immature. Speaking of which, Lynn's smile is the most exquisite 
and I'm always excited to see him. He's exactly the cutest cutie. <laughs> Yay! Her voice raised slightly, and you got the feeling she was thinking back to her memories living with him. She left the specific cone spoken. It's fine, I'll stop, because I only have 490 points now. <laughs> it's not like I was grown up either. Everyone except maybe Cliff could see our relationship was no good. Or at least not good enough yet to commit to. I know, but I still... I didn't want to give it up. I wanted to keep the family together. I thought that if we divorced or were never together, then we'd ruin your life, Cove. Uh, obviously that wasn't true. It should have been me, not him. <laughs> it's not fair. Sorry, I got you. I'm ready to commit with you, Kyra. <laughs> I just didn't have enough experience at the time to realize there wasn't only one option for us. Maybe things would have been easier on you if we had split when you were still a baby, but it took me years to start figuring it all out. <laughs> Cliff nodded. Even if his mom couldn't see it, thinking hard about something, he was likely remembering his own experiences back then. We were married, but never seriously loved each other. We hardly knew each other. I don't mind that Cliff never viewed marrying me as some kind of dream come true. I honestly just appreciate that he tried giving me my hastily made life plan a shot. I was the one who proposed after all. Got down on one knee and everything- Wait, you were the one that proposed?! Kyra?! Really? Oh my god. She had slightly, something between a chuckle and a sigh. It's very funny and a little sad that Cliff still doesn't know why things changed between us. It's obvious to me, and I guess he does know deep down. He just never consciously made the connection. It's alright. I'm not even mad he didn't stay the same towards me. Love makes everything different. But you said... I know what I said. Ah! <laughs> it should have been me, not him! <laughs> it's not fair! <laughs> Yo, girl down bad. <laughs> she interrupted before Cove could even finish his blurted out interjection. It should have been me, not him. It's not fair. <laughs> there you go, Twy. I'll thank you for the hydrate. I'll be taking care. I don't mean Cliff and I. We were just two kids in a relationship that only ever worked when it was at its easiest. And then you were born, little Cove James Holden. I loved you immediately, and so did your father. Cove was stunned. His eyes started watering as his mouth clamped shut. The inclination we had towards each other paled in the face of that. Our love to you was the real deal. Cliff was the proudest papa. Then in true Cove fashion, tears began to fall. He stayed silent, but... You were pretty sure Kyra knew the effect her words had on her son. Mm. Oh, no, man! <laughs> no matter how much time passed, Cliff never got over how amazing it was that such a precious little boy was his. I should have taken pictures of how he'd puff up whenever someone referred to you as his son. Aww. She sounded much cheerier now. A slight smile crept on Cliff's face despite his tears. <laughs> and again, he still does that now. Speaking of, I didn't see any Ono oh Melons on today's Dot Hack. Yeah, where, where's the Ono oh Melons when I'm playing Dot Hack? Come on. It wasn't hard to imagine, Mr. Holden, lighting up around Baby Cove the same way he did with 18 year old Cove. Aww. Hmm, I remember how when a real argument started brewing. Cliff had a habit of walking away to cool off. He wasn't able to handle it. His son seems to have taken after him in that way. He heard her chuckle, and Cliff looked down and blushed clear on his cheeks. He could just feel her smirk through the phone. <laughs> she breathed over the next section airily. For our whole relationship, he always ended fights by skipping out on me for who knew how long. I don't even think Cliff knew when he'd come back. 
That stopped when you were born. That stopped running. You were still gone a lot for work. And we still had fights, but he wouldn't leave. Instead, he'd go to your room, Ko. If you were asleep, he'd just sulk on the ground by your crib until you woke up. Sometimes he'd pace the room while holding you, or sit on the floor and rock you. He'd stay with you until one of us decided we were ready to talk again. Aww. We didn't have a lot of furniture back then. That's part of the reason why Cliff was always hanging out on the floor. He really came to embrace it. When our relationship got bad enough that we didn't want to share a bed anymore, he always made sure I got to have the mattress. He instead set up a spot in the corner of the nursery, just in case you needed anything through the night. Aww. He gave you a more private space when you got bigger, but he still always made sure he could be there for you. There's still no denying. Whether Cliff understands or not, he made his choices without prioritizing me. But it wasn't that he suddenly hated me. To Cliff, I was only a wife on paper. In his mind, I was a cool girl he had dated and generally liked. Nothing close to being the light of his life. All his blood, sweat, and tears weren't for himself, for me. Or even the family unit. They were all completely and totally for his baby. Meanwhile, I was doing the same, though in the opposite way. I did take us being married seriously. I was trying to force us together as a couple, so we would be a complete family for our child. You felt like a fly on the wall of a very personal conversation, yeah! Cliff didn't seem to notice when you looked over at him, his face a complicated patchwork of emotions. I guess. Eventually, I woke up and saw what I was doing. I realized it wasn't going to work, not like that. I was ready for it, I talked to Cliff about separating and starting up the divorce process. He was shocked by it, but unfortunately, it wasn't too long after when you had your accident, Cliff. Literally just there for emotional support. <laughs> Bunny, I don't know how much Cove really told you about it, but when he broke his arm, it terrified all of us. But what is this? Why it should have been me, not him. It's not fair. <laughs> Let me show this one. <laughs> I'm always weird. <laughs> nah, you're fine. Oh my god. <laughs> I love it. Cove could have died, even back then. We knew he'd likely have a permanent scar he'd have to live with forever. Our parenting hurt our child, and he was the one who'd have to carry the repercussions. You're a bit taken aback to be referred to directly. You still felt a little out of place, and she seemed completely focused on her son. Cove grimaced, and the hand holding his phone shook. Never could have thought about that meme with Twy in it. <laughs> Mom. Kyra continued as if she'd never paused. It was heartbreaking. And then on top of it all, he had put you through your parents breaking up. Taking that back wasn't an option, despite the timing. It felt like everything we had worked so hard for to make you happy was for nothing. I chose to believe we'd fix our lives from there, but to Cliff it seemed hopeless. He failed his son. It was easier for me in some ways. I had my family to lean on. That made it feel less daunting, less impossible. Cliff had only ever really n known being on his own. By the happenstance of his birth and then by choice. When we broke up, he knew he was going to have to put back the pieces of what was left alone. I wanted to be there for him, even after everything. But I was the one divorcing him. It was impossible. I never managed to be someone he truly relied on. And I had to remember that wasn't changing. As bleak as it felt at the time, Cliff still tried not to let any of that show to you, Cove. He did what he could to keep your spirits high about the move. The new house, the scar, everything. 
so that's why. Hope trailed off. He had misunderstood the impact his injury had on his parents. You're reminded of something that made more sense now. Mr. Holden had been so helpful with Cove's old Halloween costume, because he didn't want Cove to be saddened by the scar. It's clear Cove is coming to the same realizations. Now, with that all said, if Cliff was a completely perfect and wonderful guy, I wouldn't have left him. If it was even pretty good, I would have stayed. It was hard not to have custody. Sometimes I felt like I was a fun aunt rather than the mom I always wanted to be. I might have overcompensated a little at times because of that. She forced a laugh, but it had an uncomfortable edge to it. You could tell she was trying to blow off a very real anxiety of hers. Oh. What is this? <laughs> Why can't we be together? Because we're super friends! <laughs> Cliff looked ready to say anything, but his mom kept talking, kept moving forward. I'm so sorry, Twy. <laughs> Still, it's not Cliff's fault alone that our relationship didn't work. We were always better as co-parents and spouses, but I knew when separating that it wasn't going to be even. Goddamn, get super friend zoned. <laughs> and Co. The only reason I could stand not being there for you all the time is because I knew that if the situation was reversed and I could have provided a more stable environment, I would have done the same. Your dad would give up his house, his shop, even his right arm, but I would guarantee that you were safe and happy. Uh... So, as painful as it was, I was sure you'd be okay because you were still with someone who loved you more than anything else in the world. Damn. Cove lowered his head, tears falling to the ground. He tried to speak. It took him a few tries. Good fathers be like that. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. His voice cracked, and Kyra made an alarm sound on the other end of the line. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean to make you cry. I get it. It's okay. You're still crying. Everyone could tell. Being physically present or not. I love you, Mom. You've always been my mom. Not some aunt. My mom. I love you too. Her tone was thick with emotion. She was at the edge of a voice break herself. Cove just wanted to go jet skiing. Instead, he got an emotionally heavy afternoon in his wetsuit. <laughs> Poor guy. I'm so lucky to be your mom. She started to sniffle openly. Oh. Don't worry about that. Don't feel bad for me with how it worked out. I promise that none of it was your fault. And it's not as though I'm completely miserable over here. I have an incredible life with a beautiful baby boy of my own who calls whenever he can. I thought Cove's tears only came down heavier. Thank you. Kara sighed affectionately, and you could hear the warmth in her voice. At least he got closure, but damn. Yeah, Cove! Yeah, I don't think we're going water skiing today, Cove. <laughs> pack it up, pack it up. I think that's good for now. Maybe we should end the call. Take a moment. Is that really alright? He tightened his grip on his phone. You could see how emotionally exhausted he looked. Of course. We'll be in touch soon. For now, you'll only be able to keep thinking or apologizing. Hey! Cove cried out defensively over the accusation, making his mom snicker. Nah, a good water ski is exactly what is needed right now. I don't know. He got in an accident from a water ski. I don't know if that's good for him. Maybe we should just go scuba diving. Hi, and goodbye to you, bunny. I'm glad you're here for my baby. He needs to, like, lay down and process things for, like, five hours. He ain't got time for jet skiing, LMAO. Yeah. See you. What is this toy? <laughs> Hi there. I've been wanting to meet you for a very long time, Kyra. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> God. 
Bye, Mom. I love you. I feel like that would be a bit dangerous with tears in your eyes. Yeah, yeah, Cove, let's not let's not go water skiing. Let's let's go home in IDK. What watch Discovery Channel or something. Watch some videos of birds. Love you too. Cove hung up. He let his hand drop to his side, his phone brushing the fabric of his wetsuit. His other hand went up to his face, he tried to wipe the tears from his eyes. His face was red, and he struggled to put his phone back in his bag one-handed. Tell he was getting worked up. I process my grief with memes. Let's take a look at this one. Why, you took everything from me? I don't even know who you are. That's why when he meets the R-Life characters. He finally just used both of his hands and sealed his phone back into his normal place. I think knowing that his family loves him despite having split would make him feel better and give him the determination to win the water ski championship. He can do it. I don't know. He needs some time. He needs some time to process this stuff. Let's go watch the Vumafu instead, Ko. I don't even want to go water skiing. You want to go see your dad again? I do. I am curious now. That actually brought up a, a thought that came in my m mind. Barn. Here's a question for you. Uh, did I tell you my story about my accident with the with the go karts? I didn't have to tell you what was on his mind for this. Cove nodded his head weakly. You rushed back to the way you came, feet pounding across the boards of the dock to return to the scuba shop for the third time. You told us it happened, I guess. Yeah. You have not informed me of this, no. Okay, so I had an accident in fifth grade. Uh, there was like a pumpkin patch thing and they had like little go-karts. And I wanted to, to ride in a race with like a bunch of kids my age. And I got in a go-kart and I got in an accident because this one fucking kid rammed into me with the go-kart behind me and it like pushed my head into the the steering wheel and it was like a like steel wheel it was a steel wheel and like my my nose was like bleeding and shit uh my friend was the one that took me so like my mom wasn't there or anything uh and i stopped breathing because of the impact like i couldn't breathe and so like i i i have very very vivid memories of like like losing my like like being unable to breathe and i remembered them like wheeling me up to like have like the, the like the ambulance come and get me and i remember i was getting strapped into like a bed and just like struggling to breathe and i remember coming home and like i i had like a a whole big like thing on my nose because my my nose was like really bleeding still like it was still a bit bloody and stuff yeah i remember you mentioning this now yeah so barn what would your reaction be if i said hey barn so i know how i told you about how i was traumatized by like how i like almost died from a go-karting accident i want to go go-karting again what would your reaction be It was a little difficult to keep up with him. His stride was already longer than yours, but with him almost running, he had to pick up the pace. Yeah, like masochism. <laughs> he reached his dad's store and Cove still wasn't slowing down. He pushed his way through the door at full speed. I genuinely don't think it's masochism. Don't crash this time, five head thanks. It wasn't even me that crashed. There was the the kid like ramming into me. His hand released yours as he charged in. No, no kidding, kinda. <laughs> Mr. Holden had been walking around the middle of the store checking over things. Immediately, he turned up the sound. Honestly, I'm mostly just an advocate of wanting to face your fears slash past, but just hoping you take it slow this time. <laughs> Yeah, like, please be sure to be safe, but I wouldn't try to discourage you from doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, that is a risk with go-kart, and they have made them safer, honestly. Mm. 
What's wrong? What? Where's the fire? He froze when he got a look at Ko's face. He worriedly opened his mouth, probably to ask what was wrong, but then Ko launched himself at his father. So as long as you're careful, I'd say you're fine. Okay. Like if it had been an accident last year, sure, but you were a kid, yeah. It's like 190 years ago. <laughs> so I'm not sure if the situation here is comparable. Well, it kinda is. Cause like, Cove got in an accident when he was a kid. And it left like a scar on him and stuff. And then he wants to go and do it again. Now that he's older. I feel like it is. Cause for Cove it was when he was 8. Yeah. I was in 5th grade. So I was like. God. How old was I? Were you like 12 when you are in 5th grade? I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember ages. Yeah that's why I was talking about that story because <laughs> I was kind of similar in age to Ko. Okay, go-karts kind of suck personally. <laughs> Ko threw his arms around Mr. Holden's neck. He buried his face in his dad's shoulder and started to sob with deep hitching breaths. That wasn't the danger, they're just kind of boring. <laughs> oh no, we didn't see that, yeah. We learned it in this step, yeah. Yeah, no worries. 5th grade is like 9 to 10, so 12 is probably 6th to 7th grade. Okay, so yeah. I was I was around the same age as Cove then when I got in my accident. Cliff clearly had no idea what was going on, and his hands hovered awkwardly in the air. He looked at you for a brief second, hoping for understanding, before turning all his attention on Cove. He wrapped both his arms around Cove's back. Cove looked secure in his father's embrace, protected and safe. It's okay. It'll be okay. Whatever it is, it's gonna be okay. Cove kept crying. He inhaled deeply, his voice choking up when he tried to speak. Honestly, I'd say that yeah, he's good to do it. He's reconciled the fact that his parents didn't split because of the accident. So I'd say this is almost the perfect moment to go water skiing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know, you always tried to be there for me when I was growing up. And I was mean to you. I'm sorry. What? I wanna hug Kyra. I mean Ko. No, I mean Kyra. Why not both? Mr. Holden was completely taken aback. He hadn't expected this to be the issue. I... You don't have to apologize for that, bud. Kids are allowed to be mad at their parents. It's my job to take care of you. I really didn't do anything special. Bo shook his head as empathetically as he could while still tucked in against his dad. You've always supported me no matter what. You've always loved me. I wish I realized how much you did sooner. Bo squeezed him tighter. So my brain can't stop hearing Cove sounding like Bryce Papenbrook just briefly. Yeah, I don't think it's Bryce Papenbrook, but it does sound like him a little bit. Thank you. I love you, Dad. I don't want Cove to be like, why are you pushing me away, Twy? When I hug Cove Holden, I'm hugging Cove Holden. Well, you can ho hug both. At his son's heartfelt confession, the father became choked up as well. He pressed Cove into a crushing hug. I do love you. I always will. You can count on that. I want to be there for you too. They clung on to each other, absorbed in the moment. Then after a little while longer, they slowly began to lose in their hold. Cove sniffled and moved so he could use his palm to wipe away his tears. His dad's shirt was visibly damp where his face had been. Cliff patted the top of Cove's shoulders. He looked at his son with pride. Listen, when I hug Kyra Twy, I hug Kyra Twy. She is not Kyra Twy. That is your delusion, Twy. You've grown up so much. <laughs> Cove started to laugh through his tears. A wavering smile on his lips. I know, Elio, I know. Twy, you have to wake up. <laughs> Kyra isn't real. She's a fictional character. <laughs> Stop reminding me. She'll never love you, Twy. 
<laughs> Doubted that Cove would have ever thought that crying on his dad's shoulder was a sign of maturity, but it was true. Snap back to reality, Twy. There goes gravity. <laughs> Cove had changed oh, over no the man. years. <laughs> yeah, I would probably wonder about my own moms. Thought back to when you were little and tried to think if you'd ever change perspective on your parents. You appreciated everything they had done for you, but maybe you could tell them thank you when you got home, just in case. Cove so wiped at his eyes again. You're a good dad. You're a good son. Mr. Holden was plainly touched by the words and beamed at his beloved child. Cove looked away and shyly traced his scar. Why? Dreams of Kyra loving you <laughs> on that copium. <laughs> Wait, where's the Eula copium emote? <laughs> Cliff chuckled and released Cove to rub the back of his neck. The earlier panic had bled off and left the confusion. Uh. Glad we had this talk, but what was it that made you cry in the first place? You weren't too bad off when I saw you before. Hold on. I wanna see something. Wait, do I not have it up? Bruh. Give me one second. How do we know if they're actually dead or just pretending? Kyra loves me. <laughs> Sorry. Realizing he can't marry Kyra. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? There, oh, that, that's it. Okay, I, I was spelling it wrong. There we go. Oh. Cove ducked his head further down, getting a very good look at the scuff marks on the floor. Called mom. I wanted to talk to her about all of this. He kicked one of his feet shyly, swinging it back and forth against the ground. You think we come to our life for the emotional storytelling? No. We come here for the experience of dunking on Twy thinking he'll get to be with Kyra. Maybe someday he'll make a machine that makes fictional characters come to life. Maybe someday. Just like how if a time machine existed, it would exist. Chat when Twy thinks he has a chat with Kyra. Reality is often disappointing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Twy. I'm so sorry. Never give yourself credit. Cliff smiled gently and gripped Cove's shoulder with reassurance. Oh. Kyra is an amazing person to come to my defense. For me, the only hard part was seeing you and her unhappy. Everything else? That was nothing. I wrapped an arm around Cove's neck for another side hug. Cove leaned into the embrace and glanced up at his dad. The old man is tougher than he looks. Check out how powerful these arms are. <laughs> this is ten years on. I was in my prime those days. Cove laughed. It was a light sound, full of fondness. <laughs> okay, okay. Quieted down a little, finding a quick moment of seriousness. Thanks again, Dad. I know you don't want me to feel bad, and I'm happy. Because of everything you and Mom did, I have a really nice life. Mr. Holden's countenance became much more serious. He didn't take what was said lightly. Cove, you're very welcome. That's so good to hear. 
Then he let Cove go again. This time, they both took a step back to their normal proximity. Mr. Holden cleared his throat. He looked at you right in the eyes. That's a I also appreciate that you were here for support, Bunny. Yeah, no, no problem. Glad to help. What a loyal partner. Oh! <laughs> Cove looked back down embarrassed. <laughs> Oh my god, what, who the fuck would say thanks for finally noticing my presence? What the hell? I'm glad I could be here. When Cliff stopped staring at the floor, you smiled at him. Cliff smiled warmly. He nudged Cove gently as if to say, look how lucky you are. Hey, maybe I ought to give you another $20 for all this. <laughs> Put up with a lot over the years. Cove turned to you, shaking his head. I told, I told you that you got a bad deal. <laughs> Thanks for finally noticing my presence. <laughs> no. Seriously, Dad, you have to stop offering him money. Hey, I know you're going through the most emotionally important moment of your life, but I'd appreciate a bit of attention too. Wait, that's so mean. Like, it's so insensitive. I I'll just laugh. Cliff was a riot. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. I'll leave making jokes about that to Cove. Cove smiled satisfied at that. Alright. Cove exhaled slowly, his posture relaxing. We better get going. You still have work, Dad. And I think Bunny has been patient enough. Cliff grinned and waved the two of you off. Sure thing. Happy you both stopped in, but you gotta go have some fun. Careful out there. Um... I don't need to go jet skiing anymore. Bunny, if you still want to go, I don't mind watching. No. I'm not I'm not gonna go if if you don't feel like it. No way, you're a mature young man. If you wanna jet ski, then you should go out and jet ski. I'll still be here if you need anything, right? Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, just take care of yourself. Cove waved to his dad as he started walking out. He followed. When you turned back to Mr. Holden before you went out the door, he was waving. Bye kids, you'll do great! Once again, as had become today's habit, you and Cove walked down the dock side by side. But this time, Cove had a bounce back in his step. The smile was soft but radiant. Thanks for staying, and sorry for how long it took. Let's see. I want to say either you did the same for me or these things happen. I think they go with you do the same for me. He had his back and he had yours. It was just how things went between the two of you. Cove grinned at you, all grateful positivity and sunshine. The water lapped at the dock beneath your feet. Cove looked down when a particularly strong wave crashed against it. Mm. It's weird to think about my parents' relationship. There's all this stuff that I don't know because I wasn't there, or because I was just a kid, or because I didn't even exist yet. It feels really complicated. I know what you mean. I feel that way about mine. You could sometimes hear your mom's talking about something and be completely surprised. It was strange when you had been around for something, but hadn't truly understood it because you'd been too young. Cove nodded without elaboration. He looked out into the ocean wistfully for a moment before he shook it off. It's nice. I'm happy they were married, even if they didn't stay together in the end. I'm glad you're feeling better. Mm, I, I don't want to bring up that conversation after all of this talk. No. No, that's... no. Yeah, focus on what's ahead. The two of you began to move quickly... Uh, blah, blah. The two of you began to more quickly make your way across the boards. Despite your excitement, you were both careful. Neither of you wanted an accident, especially after what happened with Cove's first jet skiing trip. Oh, thank you for the hydrate, overtaker! Hmm. 
path. We finally got to the rental place. You're surprised at how easy the process was. It took no time at all for Cove to climb on his jet ski with shaky legs. Uh, I'll, I'll rent my own jet ski. If Cove's gonna go jet skiing, I'll go jet skiing with him. I don't want him to do it alone. We'd spent this entire time wanting to jet ski and we're thrilled to finally climb onto one. It was lime green with blue detailing. The jet ski rocked slightly as you got on, bobbing with the waves. We looked across the cove. He sat motionlessly astride his jet ski, preparing himself to start it up. Aside from your distance, you could tell his hands were clamped onto the handles too tightly. He was stiff and nervous. Yeah, it'll be alright, Cove. Trust yourself. Alright, maybe I should hype him up. Go, Cove, you can do it. Hmm. I think I want to be reassuring. He took a deep breath. You could see the rise and fall of his chest. Thanks, Thanks Bunny. He inhaled slowly and started up the jet ski. He roared forward and you were surprised you could hear him squeak over the sound of the engine. Gumbade, ko, gumbade, gumbade, do you bestie? He stopped after a few seconds and breathed again. After he'd calmed himself down, he started it up once more. Ko sputtered and stalled with it for a while, going a little farther each time. He grew more comfortable with the feel. Ko eventually reached the point where he only stopped the jet ski when he had something to say. He kept shouting things at you. This is amazing! Did you see that, Bunny? This is so great! Wi-Fi Kun Gambare! Wow, it explodes. Oh, are you having internet issues, Kun? You had gotten your own jet ski going as well. You made sure to keep a safe distance. Hope watched what you did with enthusiasm. Nice turn! He zoomed forward and you could hear his bright laugh ring across the waves. Oh no no, you're referring to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're relieved he'd taken to it so well. Hmm. Hmm. I don't I don't think I would do well at jet ski. Because of how tiny I am. Hope kept being encouraging, but you felt like getting on the jet ski had been a mistake. You were trying and it was fun, but you also kept ending up where you hadn't meant to go. Eventually, the sun set and you had to pack up. Hope was thankfully still in one piece, no cast necessary. After everything was returned, Cove dug his phone out of his bag and texted his parents to let them know all about his triumph. They did take a photo to mark the occasion struck Cove, and he wanted you to join him in the selfie. Yeah, let's get... Let's get into a silly pose. Cove snickered when you got into position. He hesitated for a moment before trying his own funny face. <laughs> is this? <laughs> Hold on. Let me show this. Nani? <laughs> okay, you guys can still hear the game, but it's a little, it's a little quieter. Let me just... What's that video? I still need to find the one with the ending I'm looking for. Ah, uh, Oh, you found it? 
Elio, I bet it would be really cute if you tried it. Okay, let me see. Let me watch this one real fast. Maybe I should say it like this. Wi-Fi kill combate. Anyway. That felt very cringe, I'm sorry. So I did the picture and it made you smile. It would be a nice memory. Wait, hold up. I like, can't I? Oh fuck, it's too cute. <laughs> it was cute though. <laughs> Turn back up the game. <laughs> His phone vibrated after only a moment after texting it out. Mr. Holden and Kyra had likely been waiting the entire day to find out how this outing would go. With the news of his success, both the Ko's parents sent back how proud they were of Ko. Just for how far it come. Wait, hold on. Hold, hold the phone. Wi-Fi good, somebody. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Cursed. <laughs> Elio in chat. Twy never getting Kyra. <laughs> I see you're still coping, huh, Twy? <laughs> Cursed. Cursed. Watching him grinning in the setting sun after facing so many fears that day, you felt the same. Alright, yeah. I think this is a good place to end for the night. Cursed and cute bun. <laughs> yeah, we went through a whole step, so... I think that was good. Next one is late shift. Do we have a... Oh god. Do we have like a retail job? I hope not. I hope not. Balanced as all things should be. <laughs> I never changed the game category. Wait, what? I didn't? No? No, it looks like I changed it. Eh? No, it should be right. Yeah, it, it's showing as our life for me. It says our life, yeah. We need to refresh on your end, yeah. Okay, it is our life. I don't think any of the three dot hack fans will mind. <laughs> yeah, it should be our life. It's showing as our life for me. I may need to refresh. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, that was it for stream for today. So thank you guys for coming. I'll be streaming early in the morning tomorrow with some dot hack before work. So I will see you guys then. I hope you guys have a good night. And uh, let's go raid Kippies, since Kippies is streaming. And then let me just... Thanks for the stream, no problem. Yeah, let's go raid Kippies. There's my maid, th my maid. <laughs> There's my raid message. Wi-Fi kun, kambate! Let's go raid Kippies. Alright, I'll see you guys later, okay? Enjoy Kippies' stream. Bye bye